Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Vlog. And today, this is a request video. Um, the Unforgiven 259. Thank you so much for requesting this. This is officially my first request I got on this show of a video to make. And so I wanted to do it right. So Unforgiven said, um, you know, he's been watching the videos. He's really enjoying the show. Thank you very much for those comments. Uh, and he says he's new to reading comics and he's trying to get in on a good jumping point for Venom. Uh, but he's only been recommended the, the recent stuff. He picked up Edge of Venomverse, and in the back there's like a little grid of other current Venom books like Homecoming um, and, uh, and I guess, Venomverse and other, other spinoffs and stuff that are recommended to him through that book. But he was wondering where to go for the early stuff. Um, so as you notice, maybe on this channel, I do these discussion videos where I talk about Lethal Protector, Planet of the Symbiotes, or I do breaking down videos where I break down the birth of Venom and the Vengeance of Venom trade paperbacks. Uh, basically what I'm trying to do is stay in order of them, of the books and how they were released and how pertinent they are to the movie and the storyline the movie might tell. Um, but we're getting to the point now where I'm going to be going all over the place with a bunch of different Venom stories. And we're going to talk about Carnage and Mac Gargan when he was Venom. Uh, and we're going to talk about Flash Thompson. So we're going to start spreading out and getting away from Eddie for a little while. Uh, so before I do that, I do want to make this list for you, Unforgiven, and anyone else out there. If you're looking for Eddie Brock stories from his origins to like the like mid or early years of his creation, these are what you got to read. And we're going to start off with um, The Birth of Venom. This is a trade paperback. And by the way, all these books that I'm mentioning, they're all currently in print. You can get them at Amazon. You can get them at your local comic st uh, shops. Please support them first if you can. Uh, but if you're not living near one, you can pick it up digitally uh, on Amazon Kindle or Comixology. Or you can pick them up, um, like I said, on Amazon in general uh, and get them shipped to you. So the first book is Birth of Venom. And that will tell you from the moment that it'll start with this information here, uh, the, the Secret Wars book, that's the first appearance of the black costume and it, when it got on Spider-Man. And then Spider-Man brought it back to Earth with him. So that will tell you how the suit, the birth of Venom will tell you how the suit gets to Earth through Spider-Man and how it separates from Spider-Man after causing him to you know, slowly turn a little dark. I wouldn't say evil, but it, it twists Peter Parker. And so he separates it uh, on top of a church with a church bell going off. He rips the suit off using the sonics and the sounds to irritate the suit, weaken it, and then he rips it off um, and then disposes of it. But at that same moment, Eddie Brock is in the church praying for forgiveness because he's about to commit suicide. And so the symbiote rains down on him, covers him up, and gives him a new purpose in life. So instead of killing himself, he has turned his hatred towards Spider-Man and now has the power to do so and to hurt Spider-Man, so he does. So this first book, Birth of Venom, will cover all of that. It'll basically give you the introduction to Eddie Brock, give you a window into his life, what he was working on, the storyline of the Sin Eater. It'll tell you all that in that book, so definitely start there. And the second book you wanna pick up is called The Vengeance of Venom, and that's this book here. That book will basically pick up right where Birth of Venom left off, and all the stories that David Michelini, who was the writer who co-created Venom, uh, and then also Todd McFarlane, who drew him, all of their work is in Birth of Venom. But in this one, you have like Eric Larson, you have Mark Bagley, you have all these really great artists that took over after Todd McFarlane of the Amazing Spider-Man book. And all of these adventures are collected where it's like Spider-Man vs. Hydro-Man and Spider-Man vs. Sticks and Stone, but Venom is part of both of those storylines uh that you have the the big famous story where spider-man you know fakes his own death uh, to get away from venom so venom's like licking you know it's very shakespearean he's like licking the skull of spider-man on the cover of the comic book um and then you have like uh into carnage his first appearance and then you also get um and which we're going to save carnage i have a big thing coming up in february for carnage fans so stay tuned for that i did let it leak in one of the comments in one of my other videos though so if you want to go search for it but it's not a big deal. We'll, we'll do some fun stuff for Carnage in, uh, in February. Uh, but then after the Carnage appearance, it has the first appearance of Anne Weying, who is uh, Eddie Brock's ex-wife. Um, and I'm guessing in the movie, she's just going to be his, his love interest and, you know, they fall in love. I don't think, I don't know if they'll do the ex-wife storyline or not. Um, I think that would be interesting because that'd be different than a, a normal superhero or, you know, movie like this where they always meet the girl in the story. It would be neat to see him already know the girl uh, and have already had a life with her and broke up with her you know and they divorced um, but that's how it was in the comics so you'll get all those appearances in the vengeance of venom so that follows up birth of venom really nicely it's a great continuity you read one into the other and it flows perfectly 
The third book you want to pick up is definitely Lethal Protector. That book is so much fun. Um, I loved it more when I was a kid, but as an adult, I'm a little bit more critique of it, obviously. Uh, but the, the art's really great. The storyline's pretty good. It's uh, Venom leaving New York and going to San Francisco. And the reason this book is so important is because the movie is going to take a lot from it. The movie's set in San Francisco. It has Eddie Brock moving there. He's a journalist. This is a, It de deals with the Life Foundation. All of these things occur in this book. Uh, the Life Foundation was set up in like Spider-Man 298 or 299 and that stuff is in Birth of Venom so you'll get their origin a little bit there but this really fleshes them out and uh, and also introduces uh, Donna Diego who becomes Scream. She's like a female symbiote uh, who may or may not be in the movie according to IMDb recently. May not be true but you know they listed her on uh, an actress on there. Two actresses playing the character so we might get that character. So you'll want to read Lethal Protector to find out more about the Carlton Drake, the Life Foundation, Eddie Brock, his time in San Francisco, uh, helping the homeless there, uh, which is why I think they might tie that into the Life Foundation, like pulling homeless people, which we talked about in my last video. So definitely pick up Lethal Protector. Uh, that one is a solid read. And like I said, the movie, it's probably very influential to the movie. So it's going to be, you know, definitely mandatory for you to read if you're getting psyched for the film. Now the fourth book on my list is one we haven't talked about yet on this channel. This is Venom Dark Origin and this came out I think about 10 or 12 years ago and it's a retelling of, of Venom's origin or Eddie Brock's origin but without really retconning anything. I think Zeb Wells did an amazing job on this book. I just reread it recently. We're definitely going to do a discussion video on it coming up soon and this will show you actually Eddie Brock's childhood um, and it'll show the level of uh, I guess unacceptance like he was just his father he just his whole life trying to win the acceptance of his father and the approval of his father and just never getting it and you see him uh, as this kid who lied at some point in his youth and it like went well like the lie went well he he uh, a little girl down the street was missing her cat or dog I think and he um he was the one who took it but then he brought it to her and was like look I found your dog I'm the hero and and he saw how that lie worked out for him and it shows him doing that you know a lot of his life like uh, you know and then struggling with that like being this person who uh who lies to get where he wants to go and it's like a really dark like i i didn't expect this story i remember when it came out and i read it and i liked it then but when i was rereading it i didn't expect it to really resonate still like i was like wow that's really neat this guy is kind of twisted in a way um now granted that's the only thing about it that i feel is retconny is I never took Eddie Brock as someone who was capable of that when I was reading his earlier stories. I never saw him as a guy who like grew up lying and, and would steal like a neighbor's dog and then return it to them and be like, hey, I found your dog and be like, you know, act like the hero and stuff. It never dawned on me he was like that kind of person. So it was still a neat take because Zeb Wells, not only does he do that, but he doesn't retcon what came before. And he does try to evolve Eddie from his teen years into an adult who wants to learn the truth. And that's what the clincher is in the storyline is when he's a kid, that was his turning point. He saw the Watergate uh, scandal and he was watching it with his father and his father was in, like intrigued by it. He was the first time he saw his dad interested in something. And then Eddie said, that's what I want to do. I want to, I, I want to get to the truth because that's what his dad was saying. He's like, oh, look at that. Someone got to the truth of something, you know, and he's like, and Eddie was like, that's what I want to do. So he went from, you know, being like a jock to like, a, he was like a nerd. His good grades didn't get his dad's approval. He went to a jock um, that didn't get his dad's approval with all the trophies he won. So then he decided to get into journalism because of Watergate. And that is actually from the original comics. So again, Zeb using continuity and not retconning it uh, and then using Eddie as like someone who was broken who found a way to like set and was like, all right, I'm going to go for the truth now. So then he stopped lying. So then when he gets exposed for a lie, it brings back that those childhood memories, those failures, those that way he used to be. And I just found that book deeply interesting. So we will definitely do a discussion video on it, but I don't want to spoil any more because there's a lot of cool twists in the Dark Origin storyline. So definitely pick that up. Uh, read that number four on the list after you learn who Eddie is in the first three books we talked about that's a good one to go with for number four. Number five is one of my favorites. This is Venom Separation Anxiety, and this is the original cover for it, but the cover you want to find is this one uh, with Scarlet Spider on it. And this storyline will have um, a lot of neat stuff in it. It has a, a team up with Punisher and, uh, and, and Venom called Funeral Pyre. 
Um, it's going to have, a, a, there's another story in there where Venom meets Scarlet Spider for the first time. It's called The Exile Returns, and that book is awesome. That was when the Clone Saga was happening, and Scarlet Spider first became the Scarlet Spider. Like, Ben Riley was like the clone of Spider-Man. He was like, all right, I'm going to stick around in New York for a while. I'm going to put on a spider costume, and I'm going to try to help out and just stay here um, while Aunt May is trying to recover because she was ill. And, he, and there was a chance that she might bounce back. So he's like, all right, I'm going to be here for her. Um, so I'm not going anywhere. And the first enemy he goes up against is Venom, the one guy Peter Parker could not physically beat. And you get a great, great battle between these two, between Scarlet Spider and Venom. And there's actually a moment where Venom is a little afraid. And it's so, so good. So definitely pick that up. Um, and then from that storyline, uh, there's, I don't want to spoil the ending, but there's uh, there's other, it kind of leads into the next storyline called Separation Anxiety, which is in this book. And if you, you know, could probably piece together from the title, it is Eddie and the symbiote separated. Uh, and it's about them trying to come back together. So definitely picked this up for number five. There's a lot of great moments in it, a lot of great action, a lot of great artwork for sure, and uh, and just further telling that story of Eddie Brock and how important the symbiote becomes to him ever since it changed his life, and that's what Separation Anxiety is all about. The sixth book is a really unique one because these ones are just random stories. Uh, they're a lot of fun, granted, uh, but they, they, they don't really add a lot to the character of Eddie, uh, but there are little threads in here that kind of piece together things that will get set up in future storylines. Uh, but for the most part, they're just like these fun standalone adventures. And every once in a while, you need that as a palate cleanser of like the continuity and the, and, you know, and just and reading things one after the other. So this book, The Enemy Within, will certainly, you know, satisfy you in that way. It'll be the nice breather, um, even though it's pretty intense, the stories that are in there. The Enemy Within has uh, Venom the Madness, where he fights Juggernaut from the X-Men, and he gets like all this like weird, like a, he goes in the sewer and there's like this weird chemical that uh, his suit responds to and it drives him crazy and he did, like grows multiple heads and they're all talking to him and it's so crazy. It's a weird, weird book written by Anne Nascenti, Kelly Jones did the artwork, but I don't know, it sticks with me. It sticks in my mind. I, I just like it a lot. Um, another book that's in there is called The Enemy Within Itself. And that's one where it was a Venom uh, versus the, the Demogoblin, I believe, uh, and Morbius the Vampire. So uh, I, I know there's a lot of talks of Morbius movie being made and Silver Sable and the Wild Pack and all this stuff, and they might all tie in with the Venom universe. Well, he's met all those characters. He's in the comics. And so this is one of those stories where he met Morbius. And, uh, and like I said, Demogoblin is in the story as well. And Demogoblin's awesome in it. He's really cool. I like that villain a lot. So uh, that story's in here. And then I think there's a, a one shot of Venom versus the Incredible Hulk, I think uh, by Peter David that was put in this book as well. So Enemy Within, really good time. Pick that up for number six. And the last book you want to get, uh, one through six, that will lead you all the way to this point here. Uh, and this also ties into the movie in some way. This is Carnage Unleashed. And so you've already read the first appearance of Carnage in the Vengeance of uh, Venom trade paperback, which was book number two on our list. And now this is number seven. It's Carnage Returned. And it's a miniseries called Carnage Unleashed. It's all collected in here. But there's also um, the Ven the Plan of the Symbiote story, Venom Plan of the Symbiotes, that whole crossover with Scarlet Spider and Spider-Man and everything. So pretty much everything that was set up, the Scarlet Spider battle, the, the Carnage thing, a lot of it pays off in this book. And Plan of the Symbiotes is very important to the movie as well because Ruben Fleischer, the director, also said that Lethal Protector and Plan of the Symbiotes, those are the two stories that inspired their script the most. So you're definitely going to want to read this. Plus, it's a nice end point journey for Eddie Brock. It, it really uh, brings him full circle from a, someone who was uh, rejected in the beginning and the symbiote was rejected by Spider-Man in Birth of Venom. You have that arc there written by David Michelini and then all the way here, Planet of the Symbiotes is the acceptance where the two of them learn to accept each other fully. Um, and they're even accepted by the world a little bit because they saved the world. So it's just, it's a really big arc there between these seven books. But I feel like that's a good place to end for your Eddie Brock journey for now. And I will definitely do another one of these videos um, maybe in a couple months or like maybe two months closer to the 30th anniversary. And we'll pick up from volume seven here and I'll tell you the next few things, the next seven books you should read that will track the alien symbiote. And hopefully a lot of them are in print uh, right now these seven though are but pick them up quickly because i don't know how much longer they will i'm sure they'll try to drag it out because the movie's coming out 
Um, they'll try to keep them in print as long as they can, but they're also going to be doing reprints and new versions. And one of the biggest ones they're going to do is the Venom Omnibus, also known as the Venomnibus. <laughs> and uh, that is going to feature a ton of stuff. And I actually have a list here from the Venom site. And by the way, a lot of these things I'm talking about, Venom site and um, uh, Rutger Creations, all these people like um, that I talked about in previous videos, I'm going to include links to everyone's stuff down in the description box. So if I'm ever talking about something specific, I'll usually mention there's a link below. So if you go to the description box down below, you'll actually see um, the Venomnibus link at the Venom site, and it'll tell you everything that's in the book. But this thing is, if you if you read Birth of Venom and Vengeance of Venom, this will pretty much cover almost everything after that. Uh, this collects Lethal Protector, Funeral Pyre, uh, a Daredevil issue that had Venom in it, Iron Man issue that had Venom in it, three issues of Dark Hawk, uh, the Madness storyline, the Enemy Within, Incredible Hulk vs. Venom, Venom the Mace, uh, Nightwatch, um, we had a request for uh, the mace, by the way, and I will do that storyline for you guys very soon. Uh, Venom Knights of Vengeance, Spider-Man the Arachnus Project, that's the, the miniseries that uh, Carlton Drake, who was played by Riz Ahmed in the movie, that's the art he dies in in the comics. So that's cool that they included that issue here. Um, Web of Spider-Man, Spider-Man issues, the Exile Return stuff, Separation Anxiety, Carnage Unleashed, and the Silver Sable and the Wild Pack issues that featured Venom. So literally, this omnibus, it's a hundred bucks. It's like that thick. It's going to have all of those stories in it. And considering it comes out near my birthday, I may put that on my birthday list and pick it up and do like a, a multi-part review or something for you guys. Um, or at least review the stuff in there that we haven't yet talked about on the show, like the Daredevil issue, the Dark Hawk, and the Wild Pack stuff. Uh, but, you know, that's coming later, so I'll do a separate video on that. For now, you have your seven, so uh, under, uh, Unforgiven, please, you know, check those out. Hopefully that helps you out on your journey of discovering this character and uh, and learning about him and seeing why a lot of us here love him so much. And everyone else out there, thank you so much for the support. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. I'll see you in the future. Peace.